Throughout human history, wars have been a common occurrence. In fact, there are multiple wars going on even right now. And in every war, militaries modernize. This has been seen across centuries of fighting. What started with sticks and stones has led to the era of drones and missiles. In the 21st century, warfare is being heavily conducted using drones. Russia and Ukraine repeatedly use drones to deal blows to each other. But when drones can't get the job done, there's always missiles. And this is where Russia has the edge, because Russian President Vladimir Putin has the ultimate arsenal of weapons. Missiles that are so fast that they can't be intercepted. So what does Putin have that others don't? It's hypersonic weapons. A hypersonic weapon travels at speeds of Mark V and above, that is, five times the speed of sound or faster. They perform long-range flights in the upper atmosphere before executing an unpredictable dive. They are different from ballistic missiles because they don't have a fixed trajectory and are highly maneuverable mid-flight. They are much harder to detect and intercept compared to ballistic or cruise missiles. There are two types of hypersonic weapons, glide vehicles that are launched from a rocket before gliding to a target, and hypersonic missiles which are powered by high-speed air-breathing engines called scramjets. And these hypersonic weapons can also be fitted with nuclear warheads. And if there's one nation that knows how to dominate the hypersonic arena, it's Russia. They are the only ones who have deployed hypersonic missiles to deadly effect. Moscow already has three functional hypersonic weapons. These are the air-launched Kinzhal missile, the sea and land-launched Zircon missile, and the avant-garde hypersonic glide vehicle, which may just be the fastest weapon in the world. And Putin wants more, many more, because these missiles are comfortably defeating the advanced Western air defenses that Ukraine is using. The hypersonic complex Kinzhal is not only in service, but is also being used with high efficiency to hit especially important targets during a special military operation. The Zircon, sea-based hypersonic missiles, have also been used in battle. These missiles were not even mentioned in my 2018 address, but the system is already deployed. Avangard, intercontinental range hypersonic blocks and Tereseviet laser systems are on combat duty. Russia's friends are watching the success closely and they want what Putin has. What's common between Russia, China, North Korea and Iran? apart from the fact that they are the closest of allies. It's their love for missiles. All four nations have poured in a lot of effort to develop these weapons. It has become one of their biggest ways of muscle flexing. And now all of them have some form of hypersonic weapon. China has the DFZF hypersonic glide vehicle that is mounted on the DF-17 solid fueled ballistic missile. Then there's Iran, which unveiled the Fatah cruise missile last year. And the most recent addition is North Korea, when Kim Jong-un himself oversaw the test launch of a hypersonic missile. Moscow, Beijing, Tehran and Pyongyang routinely work with each other to develop weapon technologies. North Korea's goal would be developing hypersonic missiles at the level of Russia and China so that North Korea can have a higher possibility of breaking through the US and South Korea's missile defense systems more effectively. So it makes sense that they all have hypersonic missiles with Putin leading the way. Though it could all be a coincidence, but who's buying that argument? The US is calling it old wine in a new bottle. Washington calls Vladimir Putin, Xi Jinping, Kim Jong-un and Ayatollah Ali Khamenei the Axis of Evil 2.0. And now there are reports that others too are getting hypersonic missile technology. Iran has reportedly given this advanced weapon to the Yemen-based Houthis. 
the Houthis say that they test fired a weapon which reached speeds of up to Mark 8. But the US is not worried. I think you're referring to reports out there that, that they have used a hypersonic, and I can tell you that that is inaccurate. Uh, we have no indication that they even have that capability. We continue to degrade Houthis cap the, the Houthis' capabilities, but we know that they have they still continue to get access and are provided weapons and capabilities and support um, by Iran. The proliferation of hypersonic weapons has gotten other nations worried, and the race for hypersonic missiles is on. In an unusual phenomenon, the US is not leading the weapon technology charts and has taken a while to catch up to the competition. So this hypersonic weapon gives us the capability to get deep inland in some of the things that we need to do. And most importantly, for what we're doing in the Navy by putting it on a ship and putting it on a submarine, it allows us to pretty much go anywhere in the ocean. So it gives us a competitive advantage um, against what we need to do. So the threat is really against Russia and China particularly, and it is really to get after some of the targets that they've got that over time they figured out how to defeat some of our other capabilities, so this starts to fill that gap. After eight failures, the U.S. successfully tested its air-launched rapid response weapon, finally getting parity with Russia and China. Washington is currently working on multiple hypersonic weapons with different concepts. The United Kingdom, France and Germany are working on separate projects. India has two projects ongoing, including the second generation of the Fire and Forget Brahmos missile. And now South Korea and Japan have shown interest in teaming up with the US for joint projects. With China, Russia and North Korea banding together, Japan and South Korea have agreed to work together despite having a rather bitter past. In coordination with Japan-US relations, Japan-US and South Korea relations, we want to take all possible measures to ensure the safety and security of our people. With no way to defend against hypersonic missiles, it looks like, for once, humans have outdone themselves. Because whoever has hypersonic weapons has mastered the art of deadly warfare and is far, far ahead of the game.